All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Hey, I'm trying to go ahead and mix up as best I can, John. So please work with me, man. Work with me. If you can go ahead and give us a like, follow, share, whatever you can do to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, and Lakerholics.com, along with our good friends at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. It is sincerely appreciated. <sighs> the Lakers woes continue on the defensive end. This is something that I had said I was concerned about heading into the preseason, heading into the training camp. And so far, the defense is not coming around the way I'm hoping the two. Frank Vogel hasn't found the right elixir as of yet with a poor defensive performance in the second and third quarter and a strong comeback by the team in the fourth quarter. Just They, they just ran out of gas, and uh, unfortunately, they fell short. They got as close as one point, but they were down by as many as 20 in the third quarter. Got it down to one, but unfortunately, at the very end, Golden State pulled away with a 121-114 victory. And here today to talk about the game are two great guests indeed. They're my fellow companions in crime, doing what we can to make Laker Tom's life miserable. <laughs> and we can at Lakerholics.com. Please be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. You know when he's out on his morning walk, he's going to hear this. So, hey, Tom. Hope you're well, my friend. There you go. It isn't going to be a 30-minute bashing of Tom. Just want to make sure to let you know, Tom, out there. But it is a good man. Indeed, it is, first off, the magic man himself, our Lakers historian, Sean Grice. And magic man, I'm going to first hit you up with this. It, to me, before we go into any individual performances, good or bad, it was nice to have LeBron and Russ in the lineup. AD did sit down. He did not play in today's game. Everybody knows out there what we reported on Lakerholics.com and what I snuck in there on our last podcast together, and that is Trevor Reza is out at least two months, most likely more because of he's not because he's not the youngest individual in the world. With as you said, was his arthritic ankle. He did have ankle surgery. He's out at least eight weeks, so there's going to be even more problems for the defense there. And it showed tonight after a strong first quarter defensively, where they held the Golden State Warriors to just 21 points. It fell apart quickly in the second quarter. I want to ask you this again before we get into specifics, because there was both good and very bad on the individual side of things. This is something, again, I laid concern with, with all this this talent that they brought in, all these minimum contracts. Again, they did the best with what they could. There were some really good signings in there. We'll go ahead again in individuals in just a sec. But defensively, are you at least a little bit concerned as I am? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, Tom I isn't, but yeah, I am. I, I, yeah, Tom, I, I think – Tom is the oh, he's, he's the optimist. Eter he's the eternal optimist, and God bless he him is. for that. He is, but Gerald, it almost seems like he can hold his breath in the op under the optimist like aqua aqua tank for for longer than we can because I mean I could see this I could see this defense being a problem eventually, and when our man finally comes up for air, I don't want him to blow a gasket. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just a lot of back cuts. They were very susceptible to that. A lot of baseline oh. drives. They were also very susceptible to that as well. They just were okay floppy. on the very. They were okay at best on the pick and roll defense, but to me, a lot of back cuts. A lot of people unaware, no communication. I saw that on several occasions where the, the, the players were looking at each other like, what happened? Why didn't you call it out? And things of that nature. So I, I'm kind of concerned there that something Frank Vogel is going to have to shore up and shore up quickly. I mean, it was just something that was really, to me, something that might be a problem and it's starting to already rear its ugly head. But again, it's still preseason, so I want to temper that pessimism just a little bit but 
here today to also talk about today's game. And again, before we get into specifics, we'll talk about the defense first and the offense as well is a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and catch his five things podcast, the five things articles right there at Lakerholics.com. It is the, the Mr. Admiral Akbar himself, Jamie Sweet. And Jamie, great to have you here back once again. I Hey, Lakers late night right here. Lakers fast break late night right here for you. One of the things I wanted to ask you first before we get into the offense with both you guys, the defense, again, I just, Magic Man said it. I've said it. I mean, this was an area of concern. I know you guys uh, you know, had said about all the great acquisitions we made and whatnot, but one thing was glaring was the pack court perimeter defense. That's something I had mentioned then. And with a team like the Warriors, which is very backcourt heavy, it really showed its ugly head today. Yeah, no, it really did. And the Laker defense took a took a big hit with the loss of KCP and Caruso. Um, those are two of our best perimeter defenders. Uh, no, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, it, it, you could look at like body type or rep or past accomplishments, but we didn't bring in a single player that has the youth, the energy and the defensive moxie that either of those guys have. And so that's, to me, is sort of the biggest weakness on the team right now is the defense. Um, you know, the other thing that stands out to me about this game that is just – and has been a problem all preseason, which you can kind of chalk it up to a bunch of new guys, but it was a problem last season, uh, is the absurd number of turnovers. I mean, we almost had more turnovers than three-pointers – or I'm sorry, than three-pointers or field goals attempted. We got to the line 32 times. We had 27 th- th- turnovers. Uh, it's 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 absurd at this point. Um, well, that tells me one thing. That tells me that they've quickened the pace overall from last season. But yeah. two, like you said, there's an unfamiliarity on where they're at and where as far as spacing is concerned, some issues there. And we'll get into specifics on that, but you're right. I agree with you. On the offensive end, the execution at times was really lacking because of the turnovers. But once they started to work things out in that third, late third quarter, late, late third quarter, early fourth quarter, when they started making that run, it started to come into place a little bit. And that first quarter, you know, they, I mean, yes, they did play good on the defensive end, but. Just the execution. It's just not putting it all together. It's no. probably what I'm trying to say. No five guys out there has been able to put together. I mean, it's uh, uh, no offense to the run in the second half or anything, but like, let's be honest. That's exhibition basketball. That's exhibition basketball. And Steve Kerr took Jordan Poole out, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Jordan Poole was absolutely uh, destroying us uh, from all over the court on both ends. Um, I, you know, I, I. Uh, this is going to be, you know, everybody who is hoping for like a barn burner start uh, better buckle up because I don't see one coming. This team is going to take some time to gel. I'm hoping that they can be like a fearsome team around Christmas, the turn of the calendar. Uh, it could happen faster. Uh, you know, eight, we still have yet to see the trio of AD LeBron and uh, Russ take the floor together. So that could show us something that, uh, you know, puts it all together somehow but I don't see how those three guys playing is going to fix the defense. I don't see how those three guys playing is going to fix Frank's continuing decision to start DeAndre Jordan for some reason. Those, those sort of things are, that's not things those guys fix. That's things the coaches have to work on better. And so I, I, I'm a little worried to be honest that we're going to start DeAndre Jordan over Dwight Howard who is by far the better center uh, in every sense of the word. Um, and you saw that today with, tw- uh, what, 22, 24 points right today? Mm-hmm. Actually, and act- very, 23, 23 act- and 12, 23 and, act- and 12. Very and, acti- good. and activity, activity more than any of the points, any anything else, just the activity, just the, the, the going for loose balls, it, not letting the rebound come to him, but going for the rebound. Like DeAndre Jordan, for years to me, has looked like he's kind of on vacation, 24-7, 365. Like, and, oh, the ball came to me. I should probably try to do something with it. Like, he just doesn't play with a fire that I can that I, that, that translates uh, to NBA basketball, in my opinion. And, you know, I, I'm great, great career. Uh, you know, glad he's on the team, I suppose, but I don't really see a role for him on the team. So I guess not really gra- glad, to be honest. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't. I don't understand it. I would like to see Dwight start. Uh, and I understand the desire to have some fire off the bench, but 
you can't always play from behind. And DeAndre Jordan all but guarantees you're going to be starting starting with a, a little bit of a hill to climb. Uh, well, that's why the Lakers should go ahead and, and you know, just start uh, with AD at the five for a majority of the games this season. Based on matchups, if it's a bigger, larger center, maybe you want to go ahead and start DeAndre or Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard obviously has proven himself as far as with today's game to be someone that's just leaking out ahead of what DeAndre Jordan's doing. Hundred uh, you know, percent. DeAndre Jordan is somebody that you know. Again, you know, we're we're maybe five minutes away from him looking washed entirely, but <laughs> you know, he he so did all, you know I just. At this point, I'm just very concerned is what the what the execution of both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Again, we did not shoot where I think we need to shoot. I mean, right now, again, we shot 36% from the three-point area, 42, 43% for, uh, overall from the field. I mean, these are not great numbers, especially no. one that's supposed to be transitioned, so we're supposed to get more reps, so we're supposed to get more easy baskets. One of the things I did want to get into now that we're going to go into individual performances, and the first one that starts with me is his first game as a Laker, and that's Russell Westbrook. And this was something that you were very high on, and also Laker Tom was very high on, and I was very concerned about, and so was Sean, in regards to which Russell are you going to get. And if this is the Russell that we're going to get, a guy who gives you six turnovers, uh, not very much on the offensive end, he couldn't even hit the, he got air balls, air balling from the free throw area, 15 feet away. He's still, you know, these were his shots back in his heyday. These in the MVP year, he, he made the shot. No problem. Now it's quite a different story. Yeah. I'm not too worried about Russ yet. I'm not too yeah. worried about, well, cause here's the thing, right? Like, Russ and LeBron, this is why it's going to take some time to, to gel. They're going to have to figure out how to play together. And that's what I thought. That's exactly why I thought ADN didn't play tonight. I thought that Frank wanted to give Russ and LeBron a little bit of, of time. Not just because they hadn't played the preseason game yet, but because they it's not going to like happen overnight like AD and LeBron did. Because those guys basically play in two different parts of the court or they can play in two different parts of the court. LeBron and Russ do a lot of the same things. And so they're going to have to figure out a way to not just be the guy who runs down the floor and stands in the corner. Like LeBron's going to have to like set some screens, cut off the ball, move a little more on offense than he's used to moving in the last few years. And the same is going to go for us. I remember Tom had a series of articles about which Laker is going to have to adjust the most. And it's frankly, it's all of them. The, everybody's going to have to adjust to playing with these, with that level of gravity with two ball handlers who are used to having the ball in their hands all the time. Um, again, it's a problem for the coaching staff to figure out. I think one of the ways you do it is you stagger their minutes uh, a lot more than probably we saw tonight because they were only going to play a half of basketball each. Um, but, you know, I, I, I I think the defense is the bigger concern. I'm really, st I'm still not really worried about the offensive end. I mean, I know we didn't shoot the ball great. We really haven't shot the ball great. Uh, we're shooting volume threes. We're not making them in volume, which has always been my critique of the whole volume three philosophy. Like, just shoot it more. Well, what if you have a bunch of guys that can't can't make them, or you have a coach that doesn't run an offense that is three point shooter friendly, which is exactly what we have. So. Uh, you know, those those things I think will, will iron themselves out. I, I do expect us to be a team that dominates more in the paint um, just off of rebounding and, and, and lobs. But it's the defense, like you led the segment on the podcast off, Joe, that I think is good, the far greater concern. I, I think that if this team can't be at least a top 10 defensive team, we're going to have a really hard time winning basketball games, even in the regular season. Um we don't have I'm enough. saying top 15. If they they need to be a top 15 defensive yeah. team, if they're going to have a if they're mm -hmm. going to be as far as a top five offensive team, top 15 defensive team is probably yeah, the best. I'm going to ask. With we're not a top five team. offensive team right now. We're not a yeah, top five offensive team. That's and what I'm that's saying. The problem. You're not going to. That's the thing. Like you're you're not going to take the coach out of the team. You're not going to re. Uh, it's not like a it's not like NBA 2K where you just like run a different play and it's all cool, bro. Like these guys play a certain these these guys play basketball the way they've grown up playing basketball. And Frank Vogel coaches the game of basketball the way he's come up through the ranks of the NBA coaching basketball. And that I mean he'll make a little tweak here, he'll make a cha slight change there. He white knuckles it. He he's a he, white knuckler. 
Yes, he's like that's right, exactly. He's he's like gloves. Who needs gloves, right? Like that's Frank. That's Frank Vogel, which has a lot of positive to it. But in this moment with this team, I'm not sure it's enough. Uh, and so it's it, it's it's going to be an it's really going to be an interesting season. Uh, you know, I have not been predicting a, a blazing start. In fact, I've been predicting the opposite. And uh, I, I, like I said, I, I'm very excited but, to have Russell yeah, Westbrook on the team, but I think it's going to take some time. Since since Tom isn't here, I know <laughs> he he has this idea that because we have a big three now, right. that if if for whatever reason AD or LeBron miss time, he seems to think that like the Nets, we can just throw Russell Westbrook uh, with the rest of the guys and uh, with some magic beans and. It'll <laughs> we'll, we'll see the uh, the bean stops, but me and Gerald have said that there aren't magic beans with Russ. He, he it's not that kind of situation here. He he needs to play a specific way. Yes. At a specific tempo. Yes. Within the system that LeBron and AD have cultivated. I mean, right. I know Tom said that which superstar had to sacrifice the most well if we use logic here the one guy who needs the ball less than the others and can still be efficient is anthony davis because we could still throw him the ball in the low post and he usually gets a lob gets a dunk or gets free throw opportunities it really comes down to how much is LeBron willing to defer to Russ if Russ is playing like he did tonight. And Gerald brings up a good point. It's It, it may come to a head where LeBron just puts his head down and, and ignores Russ because he's playing so inefficiently. And that's going to be a problem. That's continued to be a problem because if Russ plays like this, and again, we got to go ahead and make sure everybody knows that you got to, he's got to take time. He's got to go ahead yeah. and just work within the offense, get more acclimated to it. Obviously shake off some of the rust from the summer because it certainly looked like there was a lot of rust today on yeah. rust. I'm hopeful that he'll be able to go ahead and work things out. There were just a couple glimpses of what you could see him grabbing the board by himself, mm-hmm. just taking and taking the ball up. I know that the team was more committed to going ahead and, up and quickening the pace, which I liked. And I liked the fact that they were committed more to transition, including Kent Bazemore, who took a, from himself, he took a couple times where he was just taking it by himself up the court. Yep. Dwight Howard tried to, and that <laughs> sort of failure, but I, you know, I digress on that. But again, this is something that I'm, I'm starting to get concerned about is on the defensive end. It's a huge Lakers. concern. It's and a this, huge concern. The backcourt defense, the perimeter defense was very faulty tonight. I mean, Jordan Poole and Stephen Curry just blitzed through the Lakers like they were pretty much standing still, and that was very disappointing. Kendrick Nunn was seemed to me the only one that kind of put any resistance. Ellington was absolutely horrid out there. Awesome. I mean, he he was just absolutely putrid. I mean, it, you know, Carmelo, this was uh, you're going to see this with Carmelo. You're going to see one or two games where he looks like the all pro, the hall of famer that he is. And then you're going to see a game like today where he just looks like he's a 36 year old player. And that's going to be something people are going to have to live with for the rest of the season. Same Similar thing with, with Malik Monk. Yeah. yeah Malik, Malik Monk was you know, terrible on defense. Terrible. And that's, and yeah. And that's something that's why he, he is not with Charlotte right now is because right. of the fact that he is just not that good on the defensive end. He's been a great spark plug as far as off the bench. The first two games did very well shooting wise. This was his opportunity tonight, I think, to go ahead and capture that off guard position away mm-hmm. from both THT and Kendrick Nunn because none of these individuals have distanced themselves. And after tonight's performance, it's still up in the air because off the bench later in the game, Kendrick Nunn and THT got a chance to play a lot more. Rajon Rondo came in the game to settle the things down. And Austin Reeves actually contributed quite well on both the defensive and Perfect. offensive ends. Yeah, he, he, play, he shot well from three point, got some steals, played very heady, played under control, which was very surprising to see that the youngest player there outside of THT 
was playing more heady than virtually anyone else on the Lakers team. So Mm -hmm. I'm just saying at this point, well, before we go ahead with the new Caruso deal with Austin Reeves, (laughs) let him go ahead and uh, start playing. Come on now. Come on now. Austin Reeves ain't no Caruso. He's got hair. Well, that's true. (laughs) But, you know, again, this was probably his best performance I have seen him in a Lakers uniform because he did not fare very very well during summer league. But I I guess, again, he's proven himself in practice. That's why he got the contract, the one-year guarantee, one-year guarantee. So we'll see from there. But, you know, some things I want to go ahead and point out. Again, Dwight Howard had a very good game, 23 points, 12 rebounds provided the energy Kendrick Nunn and THT in the second half Jamie I want to ask you this again it comes to the situation we're still up in the air on who's playing that that off guard that final position because on days where you're going to start AD at the center which I hope there will be and you won't have DeAndre Jordan starting although I have a feeling we're going to see that a lot more than what we would like to see Uh, there is going to be someone that's got to fill that space on that off guard position opposed opposing to Russ, there's been none of these guys. None of these three guys has differentiated itself. And if you want to include Ellington, that's four. Kent Bazemore seems to be an individual that they're going to put in the starting lineup. He played okay today. And he actually, to me, it was one of the best starters out there. LeBron was just cruising. You could tell he was just cruising, yeah. came in, scored 12 points. And I think he was done actually nine points. And he was pretty much done by the end of the half. So he only played 18 minutes. So he was just pretty much cruising throughout the entire game. Bazemore provided a nice lift for the team while he was in there. I think that's something that they're going to use going forward and have him a part of the starting lineup. But on days where AD is at the five, is there anyone that's going to be able to stand out? Because right now it just seems to me like a toss up. It seems like all three of these guys want to come off the bench the way that they're playing. I would agree with that. I, you know, I had high hopes uh, for Kendrick Nunn to break through. The more As I, did watch, I, but I, I, I'll be honest. The more I watch this, the more I think that you're gonna see. We're gonna need Rondo um, to, especially to close out games, to like break a defense down the way a professional can. Um, and that is a skill that, other than LeBron, nobody on the team possesses. Um, you know, I, I, if I had to choose one, I would I would choose Ellington because he can get ridiculously hot from three. Um, and I, it's funny to me, it, it, Frank Vogel is such a frustrating coach sometimes. Because what, what was it, two, three days ago, he was like, well, I want to find a lineup that I'm going to set in stone. And then he has done nothing but change everything, every single game, with nothing there's no continuity to any of it whatsoever. Like it's all just like, like it's just like watching the clowns come running out of the car. Like who's coming out of the car next, Frank? You, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. These guys, like, I, I don't understand what, what, why he would ever say something like that. And then coach the way that he coaches. Like, you don't have to say that. You just have to say, like, I'm going to experiment with stuff and see what's going to happen. And everybody was like, yeah, great. It's preseason. But no, he comes out and says like, I'm going to look for the thing that will stick for forever and then proceeds to do nothing that looks like it ought to stick for forever. None of it looks good right now. None of it looks like it works to me. Um, so, I, I, you know, I to your point about AD starting more at the five, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't see it. I don't think we have enough size to do that. If you burn AD at the five, that means you have to play LeBron or undersized guys after that at the four. Like, you have to. You have no choice after that. So, it's strange to me that we didn't pick up like another kind of that we didn't try to keep um, either. Well, obviously we couldn't have kept Travis, but that we didn't try to keep Morris uh, somebody else who can bang a little bit or even play like a small ball five. Uh, you know, ADs are small ball five. You, you, you know, Laker Tom floats the LeBron at the five idea every once in a while. And I also think that's crazy, but uh, I, I mean, maybe for like uh, 90 seconds, <laughs> two minutes or so, <laughs> but you're not going to start or you're not going to see like for 12 minutes a game, LeBron at the five. Like it's just never going to happen. Like uh, he doesn't want to, he, he, that's not what he does anymore. He's not, he's not mentally wanting to do that physically. You, you don't, as a fan, I don't want to see him banging away, trying to get re- like playing defense in the paint. Like that's not where you want to burn LeBron. And, you know, like we saw, like, and it's an excellent point about what version of Carmelo you get every night. Like, if you have an off night from Carmelo Anthony, that kind of means you have to play more of Dwight or DeAndre. 
which means you kind of have to you have to move. Uh, but if a, but if Mello is on, then you can put slide him into the four, and there you 100%, go, hundred percent. Which is why I would start him. Honestly, I would if I were because then be you honest, know what kind of mellow you're going to get, you know, and he has a chance to like get going with like the best guys on the team to be like to have. I mean, he's he says all the right things, but you just know that somewhere deep inside, Carmelo Anthony still looks up at the mirror sometimes, and he's like, "I'm an NBA starter," and and that's because that's how he's wired, right? He's he was a superstar for three quarters of his four fifths of his career. You know the, the 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 guy every other team scheme for, and 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 to now just be like, yeah, whatever the coach needs me to do, after just like a couple of years, I I I, I get it. He's saying that, and and those are the words that are coming out of his mouth. But I don't believe it. Uh, I think he's wired the way he's wired, and you know Rondo says the same thing, but then Rondo gets to close playoff games or you know and, and win NBA titles. So I you know I. I, I'm. It, we have so many guards on this team, and all of them are specialists. All of them are specialists. None of them, except for maybe Bazemore, is like a, a well-rounded player. We hope THT will be a well-rounded player, uh, and that's where it ends. Like you know, Monk, a shooter. Ellington, shooter. Kendrick Nunn, frankly, more of a defender. Uh, but he's and, a scorer. He's someone who's a slasher. Someone who can. Provide that if you can, if he just is consistent, it, consistent from the three, he could, he might be that answer. He might be that answer. I mean, Sean has a great saying, uh, you know, there are shooters and there are scorers. Uh, and we have too many shooters and not enough scorers. Kendrick Nunn, I suppose, could be one of those guys. THT um, could be one of those guys. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. You I saw I, glimpses of it tonight. I see glimpses of it, you know, like I see Haley's comment. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not sold on, I, I'm not on the THT, T, THT. I think we get, I think we let the wrong Laker walk. If you ask me, I think we should have kept Caruso and watched THT mosey on out the door and, and good luck to you in Chicago. I, Cause, but it's, it is what it is. So I, I find myself fascinated with THT and none playing together offensively. Mm-hmm. That is, that to me is it could be uh, a deadly combo, especially since <clears throat> uh, I agree. I agree with Gerald. Actually, I think what it, it's condi- it's conditioning and programming with Kendrick Dunn from his time with the Golden State Warriors to his Miami time with, Miami Heat with the Miami Heat and Spolstra and Riley system. When you put a primary playmaker beside him. He becomes one of the best secondary playmakers you'd ever see. But he also is forced to become, like Gerald said, a scorer, not necessarily a shooter. Mm -hmm. His primary objective is to drive to the rim and create opportunities for himself and others. And I think if the only way this can work is if THD develops a jumper. If he develops a consistent jumper, then it makes it consistently harder for you to defend THT and none, and maybe you add a LeBron and stagger in an AD, AD there. So, but, but it's all dependent on THT shooting at this point for them to make it work. Because like you said, Gerald, we do have a small backcourt. That, that's going to be a problem throughout the season. But I think if you could find a consistent mix with Russ, THT, and none because those I think those would be your three best backcourt players offensively. Then that would be the best balance. Monk, I think, is a wild card. I mean, as we yeah. saw tonight, yeah. he didn't get see the best of Monk. But yeah. you got to find those days with, with Frank. He's this is not enviable, Frank. I know you're not the biggest Vogel fan, Jamie, but this is not enviable task for frank vogel to find that chemistry mix each and every time out who is going to be good and when each and every game it's just it's very hard for this to go out because you've got so much inconsistency and questions behind the big two i mean i can't even count russ in this equation right now because of the fact that if you see the rust tonight you saw a lot of rust yeah. I, I mean, this, these are games that Russ is going to have. These are games that Russ is going to have. You can also see the games where he's getting 25, 10, and 15, but mm-hmm. you're also going to see the games like today where he's just putrid out on the floor. And, <laughs> you know, that's the problem. I mean, you need consistent growth. 
And like you said, I don't see them gelling maybe till Christmas time at the earliest. And this is going to be something that how much water can they tread until that point in time? I mean, that depends on the, you know, I haven't, I'd have to look at this, the, the, the schedule to see what I think about the. It is supposed Christmas to be front loaded and is supposed to be advantageous. Although the Lakers have not performed as, as well at Staples center as they right. would have liked. They no, they're, they're better on the road. They're a better road team. LeBron's a better road player. All of the Lakers love to like silence crowds. So <laughs> we need to we what we need to do is start wearing Clipper jerseys so that all the Laker fans are like only lukewarm and then we'll start kicking butt. At Bite Staples. your tongue. I, I I you know I jest. You know I jest. I have a coworker who's like says he's a Laker and a Clipper fan. And I'm like, well, that's impossible. You can't be <laughs> It's just not possible. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're You must okay. be from another. Wait, when you're a something. Lakers fan and you're a Clippers fan, you actually stop in the middle and stop at USC because wow, that's no. where you are that's... in the middle of LA, right there. <laughs> what, and root, root for amateurs? No, thank you. That's uh, like Kramer. Because like he had the sports arena. Yeah, the sports at, arena, at, yeah, the sports arena on first. one side, Staples Center on the other side, and you have USC right there in the middle directly. Oh, yeah, so yeah, true. there you that's go. That's true. It's like Kramer from Seinfeld. I'm at first and first, the nexus of the universe. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, again, I think what I would like to see, we have got three preseason games left. I would like to see Frank switch the roles for DeAndre and Dwight. Uh, I, If we're talking about merit, Dwight's earned the starting role on merit. If we're talking about talent, Dwight's the far more talented player. If we're talking about energy, despite being, I think, almost four years older, Dwight is the more energetic player. Like, there's no box that DeAndre Jordan checks better than Dwight Howard has checked up to this point in the regular season. Um, I think that you need to figure out, and quickly, not just how do Russ, LeBron, and AD play together, but when LeBron and AD sit, who plays with Russ? Who are the other four guys you put around Russ to maximize the Russell Westbrook minutes? Uh, and you have to put a lineup around him that he can work with. You need to have a, a big man screener, and you need to have who can generally finish lobs or offensive rebound well, because that's like what Stephen Adams and uh, I forget who was the center uh, at the time when he was in Washington. Um, because I don't count the Houston experiment with no center. He had Alex just, Len. That's right. Who's you know exactly? He also exactly. Had Daniel Gafford, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. both of those and guys. Robin are, Lopez. Robin Lopez is exactly the kind of center Russ loves to play with. I feel like, but the other thing is that you need a couple of like. I feel like Russ and Malik Monk have to be paired together, and possibly uh, Baysmore, so that you have a, some defense, some shooting, and you need a hardcore, and you need a, a guy who rolls hard to the rim and can finish lobs. Whoever that is, if it's DeAndre Jordan, great. If it's, uh, so, but that's that I think should be mission one is with LeBron and AD sit, and it's just Russ and, and four guys. Who are those other four guys? And then we got to, I mean, we haven't seen the full team play for 48 minutes. You know, we've only seen a half of the team play at best, uh, not really at ever yet. So, you know, in, in some ways, this is a little bit of chicken little right here in that, you know, we haven't ever seen Russ LeBron and AD play minute one. Uh, and we haven't seen them play in the second half. Um, and we haven't seen LeBron play where he cares, <laughs> right? Like, LeBron don't care about the preseason. He just doesn't want to get hurt. Uh, oh, you could actually so, hear him audibly talking smack to Steph on that free throw line. So, mm -hmm. yeah, totally, if you he is, he is, yeah, he is not, he is not, he's not locked in in any way, no. shape, or form. So, I, I, you know, I to 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 play my own devil's advocate here for a second. You know, we're we're we still seen only like four fifths of the product, three three quarters, right? So, let's reserve complete and total uh, negative judgment. For we see the real thing, but, but you it, gotta have concerns. Hundred percent. I mean, and like you said when he started off, my biggest concerns are not on the end of the court where you shoot the basketball. It's on the end of the court where you stop the other guy from doing it, and we look terrible on that end. We look ob well, absolutely. Well, when you score one hundred fourteen, you're you're correct. When you score one hundred fourteen, offensive side of the ball shouldn't be that much of an issue. But when you give up one hundred twenty one, that's a concern indeed. But before we head on out, Magic Man, before we go ahead and talk about what you're doing at Lakerholics.com, is there any last and final observations of the game before we head on out? 
Uh, you know, Gerald, uh, I agree with you about Austin Reeves. I think that was a silver lining. He he maximized his minutes. Yes. He made the most of his time out on the court. Which scares think- me because if he maximized his minutes there and this is the best we're going to get, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's, it uh, speaks yeah, for I'm, itself. I, I, yeah, I hope. <laughs> I am I not going on the Austin Re- uh, Reeves bandwagon yet, as of yet. No, let, sorry, let's, Twitter. Yeah, let's not let's not hope that this IPO goes all the way up and then we see it go all the way down again. Let's right, let's Jamie, keep let's even keep start. it even keeled here. I hope twenty eight minutes per game, Austin Reeves. Twenty eight no, minutes per no, game. No, no, no. Please no. no. <laughs> oh Please yeah, no. it's coming. You know it's coming, and I'm not even rooting for it. I'm just. I'm just seeing the future. I'm, I'm just. I, I, I told this to Gerald before. He he actually he looks like an NBA player. He actually he has the <laughs> makings of one. Will he actually be one? Is another question. Oh, he looks yeah. like Kobe Carl. Yeah, right, he looks like Kobe Carl. Kobe Carl. Looks body like type. His... Body type. He needs to go to the weight room. He needs to go ahead and get and jacked. He's, and he's gonna get carded everywhere he goes when he's forty-two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I don't know about John, you, buddy. Are you? Are you? You're Jamie. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, they well, don't card well, me hey, anymore. Hey, so nobody he, either. He's no Steve Novak yet. No, <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet, indeed. But before we head on out, Magic wow. Man, I know you're doing a lot of great stuff at Lakerholics.com. What you doing? What you? What you? What's going on? What? What do we do? We need to go ahead and check out for you at Lakerholics.com. Yeah, Gerald, I'm just in uh, the final editing phase of uh, my Diamond Jubilee uh, post I'm, I'm running. I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, the the lane that was uh, on Twitter and other social media sites, uh, it looks pretty cool. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping the production values meet the expectations. Um, I'm also working on a post about uh, none and THT. Uh, again, um, I, I feel like the minutes they played tonight were actually pretty positive offensively. I think they have a lot of communication issues defensively. And like you said, Gerald, um, I'm not as down on Kendrick Dunn defensively as other people are either. I see him fighting out there. It's It's not really an issue of effort with him on that end. It's can you create a situation where you get the best out of him on that end by surrounding him with other talented defensive players? So I think, like you said, Gerald, it's a catch-22 right now with Vogel. He's got to find a way to balance offensive, an offensive teeter-totter and a defensive teeter-totter, and it's just not easy right now. Also, as well, you got to check out the great stuff that he's doing today at his five things column on Lakerholics.com. It is Jamie Sweet. And Jamie, before you keep on going ahead and pressing for 28 minutes a game for Austin Reeves, <laughs> as he's already created a starting lineup of Russ, Reeves, Monk, That's Bay, my North bench. White. That's my bench. What are you talking no, about? No, no, that's your starting lineup. I'm going to say bench. that's your starting lineup. Okay, well, you're taking the – Put LeBron put LeBron and AD in, on the bench. There you go. Oh I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're fired, Gerald. You're fired. <laughs> Give me the, the mic. <laughs> Russ, Reeves, Monk, Bazemore, Dwight. Oh, guys gosh. On the bench. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> not, as, not as the first bench mob, but as for the – anyway, moving on. What, my, cinco Magnifico. There you uh, go. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Listen, uh, you know, what I, my five things that I'm working on is sort of a, a preseason uh, buffet of uh, the good and the bad. It's going to come out a little bit closer to the beginning of the season uh, and the couple of game, couple of day break they give you between the end of training camp and uh, the last game, the last preseason season game in the end of camp, camp rather. Um, you know, the Lakers uh, are a team without an identity right now, uh, which is astounding to say on a team that has LeBron and AD, but. Uh, that and those two guys just won a championship like two, not two years ago, barely. Uh, so less than a calendar year ago, less than a calendar year ago, you know what I mean? So, like, it's amazing for me to hear myself say that, but there it is. Yeah. No, it's 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 like a, a little, it's like a year and some change. But, point yeah. being, is that you don't typically hear a team with playoff aspirations 
talk about needing to like, you know, people don't criticize a team with playoff aspirations like the Lakers have as a team that needs to find itself or figure out what it's doing. But that is exactly where the Lakers are. And, you know, you said earlier that Frank doesn't have an enviable job. I agree. It's the team that Rob gave him. Uh, I, I think this team has a lot of holes in it. Uh, A lack of size being the biggest hole Uh, length, long arms does not mean size. It means you have long arms. Uh, and it ends there. It doesn't mean you box out. Doesn't mean you, <laughs> you can you, you cut around screens or, or or get yourself a good defensive positioning. It means you have long arms. So uh, they can be helpful for guys who know how to box out, play good defense, so on and so forth. But if you can't do those things, your long arms just look long on a guy who's lost on the basketball court. So I am I am a little bit worried about the the lack of size. Um, you know. We can ship some contracts out. I know Laker Tom is probably already working on 17 different trades. Uh, so hopefully one of those is for a guy with some size and not just Buddy Heald. Uh, Cause I don't think getting Buddy Heald would fix a thing. Uh, it's we have guys who can shoot the three and they're not hitting threes. Uh, you know, I don't think it matters the name on the Jersey. It's the way our team plays with Frank and LeBron and AD. It's just, it's not your running gun three point shooting team. And to try to force that mold upon it, I think is an exercise in futility. Um, and so I hope we can learn over the course of the next few uh, days and week uh, that we should not force three pointers on this team. We should not force a type of, we should allow Russ to be Russ in transition and then maybe just tell him to rebound. Uh, if that's what it is, you know, he's an amazing rebounding guard in his 20 or yeah, in his 17 minutes, he, he grabbed uh, seven rebounds, which was, Third best on the team. The other two guys were centers. Uh, You know, that's what Russ – there's a lot that Russ can do that doesn't involve scoring the ball. Um, And you're never going to lack for fire with Russ on the team. And so that was one of the things I do feel like we were missing last year, despite having Trez. Uh, And we're going to have to figure out who we are because the guys who won the championship on this team were basically Rondo, uh, Dwight, and AD and LeBron, and, and that's it. I mean, THT was technically on the team, but he really only played in the Houston series. Uh, you could, if you want to, you know, glad hand THT onto that uh, roster of guys who won the championship. Great. <laughs> but like, uh, you know, in terms of guys who had significant roles, who had, you know, impact in, in, in the game, those it's those four. And really, you know, Dwight didn't even play that much in the NBA finals. Um, so it's, it's troubling. It's troubling. Uh, you know, the grass is always greener. Everybody loves to talk, and it's always fun to talk about a team on paper. It's it's easy to talk about a team on paper. You know, it, you just look at the guys on paper, and you look how great they do things, and you say, "Well, this is going to be amazing." But then, when they get out there, you see that it it's it's not like it's not like a video game. So, uh, yeah, my five things is a little worrisome right now, if I'm being honest. But uh, I've got hope that as we see more of the guys who we need to see more of, that the outlook will improve. And I want to just let you know, it's almost the anniversary because they actually won the title on October 12th. So I know. It's... Yeah, so it is a year. So I am right. Technically, we're still within the year, my friend. So there you go. Yeah, you're I right. No. Yeah, I just checked. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Checked. Remember, I have Google yeah. and Bing yeah. at my Remember, beck and call Ryan. right here Google. on my other tab. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, it's been great talking to both of you. I know you two are coming back on Sunday for a major conversation post-game after the Lakers go ahead and match up on Sunday. So we will be back once again on Sunday. That's right. We're going to be back here taping our show next edition on Sunday. That is going to be Phoenix coming into the Staples Center. That's going to be a late game, 7 p.m. So we will be on late Sunday night just to give you a heads up. Once again, check us out at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter, Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com, Lakerholics, wherever you get your social media, at Laker Tom. Want to go ahead and make sure you know that I've got my team previews. I'm already, I think, nine in that are already on the channel. So I've got nine team previews in, other than the Lakers, of course, nine team previews in. I've had a great amount of guests just loving the fact that they're going to go ahead and talk about their team, plus also their input on the Lakers this season. So I hope you get, you get a chance to check out all those great team previews. But before we head on out, I want to go ahead and make sure you know that, again, we will be here Sunday, 
Sunday evening, late night. You'll hear this on Monday in the morning. We'll go ahead and make sure it's there for you. Truly appreciate it. But guys, any last thoughts on the way out? Uh, yeah, Gerald. I actually, um, I was, I was very disappointed to uh, read that uh, eighteen former NBA players are now being federally charged with defrauding. Uh, sorry, I think I need a root canal. Oh, sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> oh wait, I've already had one or two or three or and, four. Uh, my, my chiropractor really must. I had four. I need to spend some time at the chiropractor. Oh, and uh, w- one of one of the eighteen. My was, stepson uh, is a dentist, so he can go ahead and take care of you in Texas out there. If you you know you're one of those individual players that likes to go ahead and you know jack up the oh, rates man. right there. So, no. Yeah, I mean, and, and one of the former players being our our very own uh, Shannon Brown, uh, a two time NBA champion with the uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. It's if this is true, this is very disappointing. Um, I've seen a number of names on the list. I remember all 18 from the mm-hmm. NBA. Um, it's been reported that of the 18th, uh, I believe that collectively they've uh, accumulated almost $350 million in NBA salaries. So this is all very confusing, um, very disappointing, and um, uh, I'm just dismayed by the whole topic. Well, it is very disappointing in regards to it. So I'm I'm hopeful that we'll go ahead and get a quick resolution to this. But yes, I mean, it looks like they were pocketing about $2.5 million, uh, I think was what's being, being bandied about. That's the what I'm seeing on the news reports that $2.5 million illegally was that they defrauded through the league's health and welfare benefit plan. And, you know, it was just amazing to see some of the stories that, and some of the just the way that they did it. I mean, okay, let's say we go ahead and do it. We should all not file with the league for a root canal on the same day. And there were several individuals that did it on the same day for the same thing for the same tooth. One of which wasn't even in the country when they did it because they said they did it in the U.S. when they were out of the U.S. So really, it just the foresight when somebody goes ahead and cooks these things up, it's just amazing to me just how these people think that you're going to go ahead, whoever it is, whatever background, whatever issues, whatever things that come up in your life, how you think you're going to go ahead and get away with this. But yes, uh, I mean, Terrence Williams setting this all up, get pocketing a lot of this change. And it just is very disappointing to see, but it, it does. It's a black eye and a scar on what's going on with the NBA. I mean, the NBA is just trying to get out of a very bad 2020, and this doesn't help any matter. So it's just it's just very disappointing. And to see these players who pocketed tens of millions of dollars during their time as players collectively, it's just very disappointing that they felt the need to go ahead and work the system even more. That's set up for them as players after they leave the game. Mm-hmm. So there you go. There's my soapbox. I'm going to get off it now. But if (laughs) anyone has questions now on it or they can go ahead and share comments, we're right here on Facebook, Lakers Fast Break, Lakerholics, we're a Facebook group as well. Of course, Lakerholics.com. Please share your thoughts there at Lakerholics.com. But, guys, it's been great having you aboard. Looking forward to a great conversation because I know Sean has a lot to get off of his chest and not just about what's going to happen in the game. There's going to be a major discussion on the coronavirus and how it's being handled by the NBA and his players. I told him, I, I asked him for time. I said, Sunday's a good day. We'll go ahead and do it then. I'll make sure I have a lot of stuff taken care of as far as the time to go ahead and set you up on. So, Jamie, I hope you're going to be there as well because it's going to be a barn burner because Laker Tom and Magic Man, they're not seeing eye to eye on this thing. So, it's really going to be something worthwhile, and I always love when you put your two cents in as well. So please check out that either Sunday night on Facebook or Monday night at wherever you get your podcasts. Well, guys, it's been great having you aboard. Once again, the Lakers did fall. A fourth quarter comeback fell just short. The Lakers did lose 121 of 114. What can we do about the defense? We want to hear your thoughts. I do want to go ahead and thank so much the individuals that gave us the thumbs up and the hearts out there. Bree Marco, V Garcia, Albert Takero, everybody who watched, truly appreciate it. We'll be back on Sunday evening 
live on Facebook, and of course, Monday, wherever you get your podcasts, right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. <laughs>